Good evening, everyone, uh, and welcome to the home audience that may be watching this tonight and later on in the week. Just before I open the meeting, I just have uh, a notice that uh, our clerk read to our meeting uh, at our last meeting with regards to placards and signs. Uh, this is a bylaw of the town of Essex, and as mayor of the town of Essex, I make sure we follow our rules and order and everything, and I see, I guess all the signs are put down to the side, so I won't have to read this, but thank you very much to the people that are bringing placards and everything. We respect your, you know, demeanor and everything else, and we try to get along with all of you people. Okay, thank you very much. So now I will officially open this evening's meeting and ask if there's any conflicts of interest amongst the council members. Well, thank you very much. Uh, looking for the adoption of the published agenda for Tuesday, September the 6th. Your Worship, I just have two items to add to the published agenda for this evening. Uh, council met in closed session earlier this evening and uh, pursuant to Section 239 of the Municipal Act. And I can report that out of that closed session, direction was given uh, by council with respect to a, a lease uh, at a property identified as 49 Talbot Road North in Essex and with respect to a lease of a property identified as 64 King Street West, Harrell. And so as a result, Your Worship, I wish to add to tonight's published agenda, uh, bylaw number 1548 for three readings in respect of the lease uh, at 49 Talbot and bylaw 1552 in respect of the lease at 64 King Street. Thank you, sir. Anyone else for additions? Councilor Volks. Under uh, unfinished business, I'd like to talk about uh, the meeting September 19th uh, that will be held here. I want to discuss with council uh, under unfinished business, uh, I, I don't believe there's any need to do that. It's, uh, it's we're incurring more costs for doing that, and I want to go back to the Civic Center where we pay to hold our meetings. So I want to talk about that under new business. Under unfinished business, there's several items that I don't see itemized under unfinished business, and, and uh, I certainly want to talk to them tonight. One is the cost of the strike. I asked, I asked for that. It's, it's nowhere in the in the agenda I uh, the conference cost was forwarded over but um, and it may be my fault I'll take uh, I'll take responsibility where it lies the intent of the conference cost was for 15 all the 16 council and administration so I was looking for those two two totals um, the other item under unfinished business is um, I'm very interested to see what the uh, Essex County Library Board said in our motion and request to return to the table. So I certainly want to talk to that too under unfinished business. Those are all items that I raised at the last, uh, last council meeting that are, are still outstanding. Thank you, Chair. Councilor Bundy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If anything library related comes up uh, later, I will be declaring conflict. I'd also like to add an item under new business for preliminary discussions on a street light in Harrow Center between uh, King Street and Erie. Just have a request from residents to start investigating that process and how we can, can implement a street light. It's a county road, but it's a very busy intersection, and if you're in Harrow Center, you definitely know what I'm talking about. So, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Country Berkman. And just uh, under announcements, uh, just some uh, grants that were given to Essex uh, organizations from uh, Libro. Thank you, sir. And at this time, I have Councillor Snively would like the microphone. Councillor Snively. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I don't know if it, uh, people know that I was off with open heart surgery. And uh, I want to thank administrative staff and council for the support and all the nice emails, phone calls I got in a nice basket, and the public. The public, I had a lot of visitors, a lot of emails, and a lot of calls. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So, for tonight's agenda, with the additions, moved and seconded by Councilor Volks and Councilor Berkman. Any questions? All in favor? 
Motion carries. Okay. Item four on the agenda this evening, adoption of minutes, 4A, that the minutes of the special council meeting held July 25th, 2016, in consideration of the amendment report for Belcraft Beach, be adopted and circulated. Moved by Councillor Snively, supported by Councillor Caxero. Any questions? All in favor? Oh, question. question. Councillor Caxero. Through your worship, um, under re, uh, administrative reports, uh, item D, uh, the report 2016-03, uh, re uh, off-road vehicles on town of Essex Roads. If, um, if it could reflect in the minutes um, the three locations that I had suggested with regards to the public meetings, that being uh, McGregor Center, Harrow Center, and Essex Center. And, and your worship, that's with respect to the, the minutes from the regular council meeting of August 22nd? Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Councilor Snively. Through you, your worship, uh, going back to the Belcraft Beach drain, uh, to Chris, everything's in order there now, Chris. We're moving forward. Everything's pretty well said and done now. Okay, uh, thank you. Oh, through you. Mr. Nepsey, Director of Infrastructure and Development. Through your worship, uh, we're dealing with the um, uh, OMAFRA with respect to the report and, and the, uh, the way we went about it. So we're clarifying some issues and I'll have a status report this week. So I'll, I'll let you know. So they're, uh, it's moving forward, just might not be as quickly as we want, but I'll get back to you this week. Thank you, sir. Anything further? All in favor? Motion carries. Uh, your Worship, that, uh, I'm sorry, Your Worship, that motion was to approve the minutes of just the July 25th special council meeting. Um, so I, I think we need a motion to uh, approve the minutes of all, item, of all uh, meeting minutes from items 4A to C inclusive. Okay. Um, so moved by Councillor Cacero and Councillor Snively. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item six on the agenda, unfinished business. Uh, Councillor Volks uh, speaking to the uh, regular meeting scheduled for this room uh, September 19th. Councillor Volks. Um, yeah, I, I just, I want to try to understand why we're here and who made that decision to be here. Because council was never involved. There was no dialogue with council, there was no emails, there was nothing. So I want to know who made the decision, who occurred the cost to be here, because I, I don't even know why I'm here. I got no idea why I'm here. If it's because of the strike, then I, I don't get that, because here's what we do from the way I understand. I want somebody to correct me where I'm wrong, is that wh whoever, wherever, it was decided we were going to start holding our meetings here on August 22nd. And then in August 22nd, we made, somebody made the decision to meet here. So what did they do as a result of that decision, whoever made it? Here's what they did. They did a press release to say, hey, everybody, we're going to be at the Shaheen Room at the Essex Arena instead. And we did a public notice. So I'm trying to figure out what, so, can somebody just tell me what, what are we doing here and what we're hiding from? That's all. And I'll move on to the next thing. Okay, I have your answer. Okay. If I can just remember what all the questions were. If I would have thought that you were going to bring this up, I would have had it on my machine here, exactly the email that was sent out to all of council as to why. This question was already asked of council, but not in front of the public. So that's why this gentleman is asking this question, I guess. If he'd have read his emails with regards to this, he would have known the answer. And he probably does know the answer, but he wants somebody to say it in front of point, you. Point people. of order, sir. Please just... Your point of order being... The, that, that he just needs his question yeah, answered. I just need my question. Okay. I'm going to answer his question if you give me a chance. Now... Through a discussion with the CAO and the mayor, the mayor has the right to do 
make that change. Okay? Now, I respect all these people here that are, have an information picket or a picket. You know, I respect your workplace down at the county building. I respect your workplace over here at our town library, our McGregor library, our Hero library. You know, I respect that. I also know that the town has to do our business. We can't just take, like you poor people, 72 days off without running. Hey, I know you're not off, but you're not working. But we have to, shh, shh. Okay, shh, shh. I have the floor, please, okay? Okay, we all feel sorry for you, believe me. Now, we have business to conduct. Where can we conduct it? On our property, on our own property. We can't stop you people from coming and giving me information like you have, you know. That's all fine and dandy. I welcome it, as you told me something tonight that I will be discussing with a member of our council after the meeting. But we have town business to do. And with the help of our CAO and myself, we decided the best thing for the municipality was to move it to a venue that could handle these meetings, that being this center right, or this building right here. That's why it was moved, and I made the decision because I have the authority to do that. So there's so, the answer for everyone, so, and we can go on to the next one. Councillor Vokes, your so, question. Oh. So if I could, Sorry. in continuance yep. on that, is, is the truth is, is that we're, 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 we're holding our meetings here, myself, Councillor Bondi, Councillor Bjorkman, Councillor Caxero, and you, Your Worship, received a letter from Unifor requesting that because you were supported financially by Unifor, by the labor movement, not to cross the picket line in which you did. So the intent was to come here and try to elude the responsibility of thinking that, that certain labor movements won't be at the Civic Center, not knowing we're going to be here. And therefore, we don't show up there, we just walk in here, and hence nobody has to cross the picket line, and that strategy failed drastically. So with that being said, is can we please go back to uh, the Civic Center on September 17th, or September 19th, because all we're doing here is running from a labor issue, and that's the only reason. And I don't take QP side, I don't take, take the board side. And just because I was out there talking tonight, you can draw your own conclusions, but I represent the taxpayers. And if this building is costing them $10 more for such a ridiculous decision, I want to go back to where we're housed and what we pay for. Okay. Now. Because they'll be here next week, too, or the, on the 19th unless they can get a settlement in the interim, which I pray they do. Now my answer to your statement, I guess that was a statement, you're right. The 444 or Unifor has supported me probably each and every time I ran. They don't pay my wages, those taxpayers do. You put your hand out, sir. Excuse me, sir. When you're talking, no one says a word. So we expect to have the same towards us, okay? You ask questions, we're going to try to answer them for you. Now, will the next meeting be here? Definitely, unless the labor problem is solved. You know, this town has to move forward. The union isn't going to tell me we cannot run this town. And it's that simple, sir. So if you want to leave it there, I'm willing to leave it. Okay. I, I no, I, I don't want to leave it there. Be honest. I know with because you. you always have to have the I, last I, I statement, don't, sir. No, I go don't, ahead. I go don't ahead, Councilor Vogt. I don't want to argue, and I don't want to leave it there. I want to come up with a satisfactory resolution, and, and the and the and the truth is, there's no reason to be here on the 19th. And the truth is that the decision, for whatever reason, was not endorsed of that by the majority of council. And if the mayor can just make those decisions on his own, I guess none of us need to be here. Counselor, I, folks, why do you keep saying the same thing? I I'm have the authority. The I'm, just, I'm not saying the same thing. I'm just going to put a motion for it when the time is right that we return to the Civic Center. Simple as that. I know. Stay calm. Stay calm. Stay calm. I am. I'm telling you, I have the authority. 
And at this present time, our next meeting on the 19th of September will be in the same building. No ifs, ands, or buts. You can get as many council members as you want to try to change it. It's not going to happen. Okay, you want to have it back at the library, or I mean at the county building, I heard. Why? We can't have it down there because we won't cross a picket line. Councilor Bjorkman. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, in answer to uh, Councilor Volk's question, I'm a uniform member, Local 200, and I made a commitment to the union and I made a commitment to the WDLC that I would not cross a picket line at the Civic Center or at a library. I am also the Councilor of the Town of Essex, and we need to run the business of the town. So they were able to find a secondary location that was fully owned by the town of Essex. When we come here, we're not crossing a legal picket line. We know that. It's a, we've all been part of, of pickets and information pickets. Our business needs to keep going, and you people need to be respected. I, shouldn't, I don't mean to say you people. You LeBron librarians need to be respected as a part of our union family. I will not cross that picket line over there. So if our meeting is scheduled for there, I will not be attending that meeting. If it keeps us from having a quorum, then the business of the town doesn't get done, and we're responsible to the town as well. That's why when I sent a letter in requesting that we could find somewhere else on town property to have our meetings so that we could respect our librarians and continue to the work of the town. Thank you, sir. I think Councillor Vokes is up again uh, with regards to the cost of the strike. Councillor, is it? Yeah. Okay, you have the floor, hey, Councillor Vokes. Yeah, just, just cost doing here in, in address, and that a fixed address doesn't make a legal picket line. It has nothing to do with it. A legal picket line is wherever they choose to protest. It becomes legal at that point, and any of those who know labor law would know that. Address has absolutely nothing to do with it. It's the right to protest. Anyways, I'd like to put a motion forward that the that the council meetings return to the Civic Center as of September 19th, and I'm looking for a seconder and a recorded vote. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a seconder? Do we have a seconder? One more time. Do we have a seconder? The motion has been lost. We do not have a seconder. Okay. Okay. Councilor Vogt, you still have the floor, sir, with finished business. Yep. I think it was the cost of the strike, Councilor. Yes, uh, the meeting on, on August 22nd, I requested through administration that the actual number for the cost of this particular strike, what effect that is having on the taxpayers that I represent. The numbers were thrown around anywhere from 600,000 to 800,000, and that was actually 11 business days ago. So I would assume that that has now, if it hasn't encroached 800,000, for sure it has. And I asked for that number from the county, and I believe in 11 business days they should have been able to get that together. So I would like to know what that number is, please. Does anyone with the town administration have a report from the county with regards to that? No? You get all head shaking, no, Randy. Councilor Volks, I should say. Is there a reason why? I don't know. I think we'd have to ask did, the county. Did not, did not the county respond? That's what they're saying. No one's heard from the county. Who, who would that contact person be from the county who didn't respond? Your, Your Worship, are we speaking to the uh, letter that came out of motion on August 22nd? Yes, for the request of the cost of the strike to date coming I, from the county. I, I believe the, the letter that we had sent uh, from my office last week related to that was the request asking for a reimbursement of taxpayer money provided by the town of Essex uh, in respect of the the time lost due to the strike uh, that I, I have not heard a response back yet 
that, but that wasn't what the motion was. And even if it was a reimbursement, reimbursement, in order to reimburse, you have to have a total. So how do you reimburse without a total? Now we, we can, but someone needs to, I guess, follow up that's and right. ask the county. So, so whether it's reimbursement or whether it's labor strike total, I'll take either one of them. As I can suggest, Councillor, is that someone from administration will contact the county building tomorrow I, morning and I, I get these figures for you. I get that, Your Worship, but I, I find a little bit painful that 11 days ago I spent energy here trying to get that number as elected representative 11 days later, 11 business days of the county later, and a total of 16 or 17 days here. I don't get, still don't have an answer. When the truth is, CUPE, in a matter of, of about three minutes out on the line, gave us a ballpark idea of what it's costing with no documents in front of them. 11 days later, I get nothing. I'll talk to the next issue when I can. Okay. Thank you. I think that was, yeah. Uh, that's going to be business. Sure it's business yeah. Okay. I think Council Bondi. No, I still one, had one issue I put forward tonight. Oh, you have one, one more? I that's, sure did. Sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. I, Thank I you. I didn't jot it down, I don't think. But go ahead, Councilor Oaks. At the last council meeting, I requested a letter from the, the ECL, the Essex County Library Board, in terms of returning to the table immediately. That was the second request to do that. As of the first request, there was no response. So as an elected representative representing people, I have a diligence to them and to, to dispense to them where we are with the current status of the strike. The intent of my request in that letter is so I could tell them whether or not they're going to be returning to the table. That was, that was, I don't know if that was put forward and requested, and I would hope it would be by administration, and if it wasn't put forward and requested, why not? And if it was put forward and requested, what was the response from the Essex County Library Board in terms of returning to the table immediately? Mr. Roger, Manager of Legislative Services and our clerk. Speaking to your worship, uh, that letter was all part of uh, one letter, um, the, the first one request in uh, the immediate return to the bargaining table and the um, reimbursement that I spoke of a couple minutes ago. Um, I, same, same thing as a couple minutes ago, and, and I believe the motion and the letter uh, went to both parties uh, in the dispute, um, but that was just sent last week and we have not heard a response back. Could you please forward those e emails to me, those letter requests to me, since I'm the holder of those letters as an elected counselor so I can review them? Speaking through your worship, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I still got one more. One more. That being, go ahead, counselor. At the last meeting, I asked for the cost of the conference cost. I took ownership to a little failure in making that very clear as what I was requesting. The conference cost I was requesting at the last council Just meeting. Just a second, Councillor, for a second. I do believe that's on the agenda, isn't it not? No, it's not. Reports, isn't it? Under the reports. report is. You asked for a report, 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 sir. No, it is. The I read it. No, Just the read it. The report. Excuse me. Okay, look at What you're asking for is a I'm report. I'm just trying to help. No, for expenses? It's in the report. I read it this afternoon. To, to this, Your Worship, um, Councilor Vos is trying to clarify something that didn't come through properly on there. That's what he's bringing up. I, I just didn't catch what you said. Sorry. He's just trying to clarify something that was in that request that he didn't see. So uh, is the purpose to discuss that our item now? No. No. Or when no. it comes up on the agenda is I, my question. If you let me talk, I'll explain it through your chair. Well, it better not have to do what's with the report, or it's not. I will cut you off, Councillor, and we'll deal with it at the report time. Go okay. ahead. Let's deal with that at report time, then. I'm fine with that. Don't matter. Okay, you're going to have to make a motion to move it up. 
Okay, I'll make a second. motion. And then we'll deal with it then. I'll make, since I can't talk about it now, I'll make a motion that we talk about that report time, 15 minutes from now. I'm just going to check through here just to see what the number is to make sure we're doing it properly. Uh, 7B. I, Your Worship, I believe 7B on the agenda. Uh, conference and seminar activity. It's coming up pretty close, Councillor. It's 7B, and we're just going to 7A is the next thing. So if you can just wait, we'll do A and then B right behind it. Thank you. Thanks. Item 7 on the agenda this evening, reports for administration, 7A, Finance and Business Services, report number 2016-02, Council Discretionary Fund for Receipt. Move receipt. Support. Moved and supported. Any questions? Seeing none here, none. All in favor? Motion carries. Item 7B on the agenda, Finance and Business Services. Report 2016-03, re -conference, Council Conference and Seminar Activity Report for receipt. Okay, we need the receipt and then we can have discussion. Deputy Mayor Malash moves receipt, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Questions, Councillor Vokes first. Thank you. Um, at the last, uh, last council meeting, August 22nd, I requested, and, and again, I'll take ownership for the disconnect. I requested the cost for attending conferences, and what I've got here to date is, is this year to date and only counselors. And, and my request was all of, all of staff, all of administration, all of council, for all of 15 and 16 to date. And all I got was six counselors for so far this year. Uh, we'll go to Mrs. Hunter, Director of Corporate Services and our Treasurer. Through you, Your Worship, um, I think we maybe under misunderstood that you wanted staff to be included in here, Council Folks. We can certainly do that. Uh, but we did give you counsel for 2015 as well as 2016. Right. Yeah, it says it was, it was moved forward to 15. Okay, so we, so as requested, we can add staff into that for the next meeting. Please and thank you. Okay. Anything further? All in favor of the motion? Motion carries. Report 7C, Infrastructure and Development, a verbal report by Chris Nepsey, Director of Infrastructure and Development, with respect to the Interim Control Bylaw 1450 to prohibit development in Ward 1. Expiry September 1st, 2016. For receipt. Okay. Mr. Nepsey, Director of Infrastructure and Development, please. Uh, through your worship, uh, it'll be a similar uh, oral report that was uh, given at the, uh, the first council meeting in August. I'll take you through the Capital Works uh, uh, as well as the policy development and where we're at with those. Uh, as far as Capital Works, the Bryan Street East sewer is uh, completed. Uh, the road is restored. Uh, they're looking at doing final restorations for the landscaping. Uh, we still have an issue with the lights. That's not a contractor issue. It's not a town issue. Um, I mean, it, it is. It's with respect to the Electrical Safety Authority. How the lights were installed originally, we can't put back um, because it doesn't meet code right now. So we're working with the ESA and with ELK to figure out the best way to get these lights um, reinstalled and reinstated. Um, it's it's not, as, not as easy as simply uh, digging in a little bit of wire and connecting the lights. So we're continuing to work through that. Um, I'm hoping to get an update from, from uh, ELK shortly. Once I get that, I will forward to Council to keep them informed on those lights. Uh, the force main work is proceeding very nicely. Uh, as you can see, they, they've torn apart South Talbot um, and, and have moved up to Victoria. Uh, we did get our approval from the MTO to cross onto the highway, so they're, uh, um, they're on schedule that way. The uh, pumping station three by the baseball diamond is, is, uh, is well underway, um, and, and things are moving nicely there. We had a little bit of an issue with the old pump station uh, the steel dam, I guess, that, that the coffer dam that was around the old pump station was left in. 
Uh, so we had some issues as far as trying to get the new force main into that pump station, but uh, we've worked around that. Uh, they're continuing to work at the lagoon site uh, with respect to the diversion chamber, uh, so that's moving nicely. Uh, so as far as schedule for, for that work to be completed, we're, we're again looking at, uh, you know, what we've always said, sometime fall, right, October-ish time. Um, that hasn't changed. Uh, policy development, uh, IRCA and Stantec have been working on the regional stormwater guideline. Um, I'm still pushing them for, for uh, uh, I haven't seen a draft yet. Uh, I've pushed them. Maybe a few counselors can poke around and ask and, and see where that draft is at as well. Um, our stormwater modeling of our storm system is, is moving nicely. We've got a few rain events now under the belt that they can actually model the system. So. Uh, all in all, things are moving. Uh, um, it's tying in nicely with the fall date that we had. Uh, as far as the interim control bylaw lapsing, I, I know I'm going to try and jump ahead and, and answer some of the questions I think you're going to have for me, um, where we're at with that. What I would suggest to Council is, you know, the question was asked, if, if new homes are built, will it impact the system? Well, the answer is always going to be yes. It'll impact the system, but to what extent? Uh, you know, uh, I would consider it negligible. Uh, what I would suggest for council is to let, I mean, it's lapsed, leave it lapsed. Any builder that's coming in to build and they're building on an existing approved stormwater system. So if, if the connection's there and the, and the pipe is there and it's, the outlet's already been designed and developed for, and there's really nothing that we could change, even if we changed our policy, I would suggest to you that we're going to let them build. So, for example, uh, you know, when you're in, in an inner lot or an inner subdivision and, and the sewers are already there and already serviced, none of our policies are going to change uh, um, moving forward what they're going to do. Um, any developments that would require a stormwater facility or modifications to their stormwater facility, we would be going through uh, um, and working with the developers anyways as far as that plan of subdivision and, and going back and forth as far as what we require. At that point, uh, we would work with the developers and we would let them know right off the bat. And if they're coming in tomorrow to say we have the development, we would let them know, look, what we have in the development standards manual isn't going to cut it. So in our first meeting, we're going to sit with you, we'll sit with IRCA and Stantec and will give you uh, um, an idea of where we're going to end up. Um, what they may design to, maybe a little bit less or a little bit more where we end up, but it'll definitely be more enhanced than what we have in our development standards manual. And I, and I look at timelines as well, you know, if you're approving a house to be built now, you know, what are you looking at, three months before it's finished? In that three months, uh, I would anticipate that the, the other half of the, of the capital works would be completed as well. So, and then any plan of subdivision, you're looking at uh, definitely several months work of design work as well, back and forth. So uh, I think we're safely in that, in that area where, uh, um, where, where council uh, could feel comfortable. Um, so like I said, I'm, tr I'm trying to intercept some of the questions that you're gonna be asking me. And, and I think that's the direction and the intent that council had was to kind of take a pause and, and, and get these capital works going and almost done and our stormwater policy, again, are, are going and almost done, and we have a good idea of where we should end up, uh, and we'll push that onto the developers and, and work with them to ensure that we get uh, a good product for the town and, and for the, uh, uh, the current residents where they're already hooked to the system. So. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Mr. Nepsey. Country Berkman. Thank you, through your worship. Um, Okay, Chris, I just, want to, I just want to hear you say it again. Um, so we do expect that the capital works will be done within the next three months, because that's the question I'm going to get when I walk outside, is somebody's in a subdivision right now that's had flooding, they've had issues, and we'll say, okay, we're going to allow people to start building, and I agree with you, three months till the first house is actually uh, standing there. So that takes us to November, early December. Um, all of our our authorizations are done, all of our ministry authorizations are done. Um, it's a matter of just getting it into that, uh, into the old uh, pits, is that correct? Uh, through worship, yes, as long as, you know, it is construction. Uh, um, 
uh, all things can, you know, weather, whatnot, if things go as they have been, yes, I would anticipate that within a couple months, uh, those systems will be uh, um, finished. Uh, in addition, I, I guess, you know, in addition to the capital works, throughout the year we've also done our operations investigation and we've improved the system, you know, although minor, we've improved any manholes that we saw leaking anywhere that they were, there were inflow and infiltration, we've improved those areas. We've also pushed hard for the downspout disconnect. Uh, so uh, we're working on a downspout disconnect bylaw, which will also, you know, all those little things help as well. So, uh, okay. Just a follow up? Follow up, sir. Um, so we, when we first looked at doing the interim control bylaw, um, Mr. Watson gave us the, uh, the option of uh, designating H's on different uh, subdivisions as a hold on subdivisions that um, haven't been started yet. So would that be the, the plan of subdivision you're talking about right now? If somebody came forward and said, I want to start developing this area, we're still looking at seven, eight months of planning a plan of subdivision before they ever start building. Would that be correct? Yeah, there would be months, I don't know, about seven and eight, depending on, on how smoothly things go with their engineering and, and what they present to us and how many back and forths we have. But there, there is definitely a step uh, where, where we have to be in discussion. They can't just come and say, this is it, I'm done. So, you know, they apply, we review, we have an internal review and a peer review, uh, and there's some back and forth involved. So there is months involved in, in getting to that end product. And, and like I said, we would let them know right off the bat that you know what was good will not be good anymore as far as stormwater, uh, and, and we'll work with them uh, um, right away to ensure that that there's no uh, hiccups that way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Worship. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Malash, and then Councillor Vokes. Through you, Your Worship, to uh, Mr. Nepsey. Um, so we had previously talked talked about uh, having some kind of advertising program. Uh, in conjunction with the construction industry to say Essex is open for business again. So I would suggest that it's time probably for us to get a hold of, uh, I don't know if that's your department that would be in charge of that, or, but I would probably want to leave that in your hands to ensure that we do some kind of uh, publicity um, adventure along with the construction industry to let them know that we're open for business again to, to help the construction industry out. Thank you. Yeah, uh, through your worship, yeah, definitely we'll work with uh, the communications uh, department uh, as far as uh, some type of uh, you know public notification or, or press release or something like that. So we'll uh, we'll make sure that gets out. Okay, we'll hear from Director of Corporate Services and Treasurer, Mrs. Hunter. Before Lori Brett went on vacation, she drafted up a media release for issue tomorrow. Um, so what I would like to do is, before we issue that, also speak to Chris's department and get in the names of, of many developers as we can to also send it to them as well. Uh, but that is planned to go out tomorrow. Thank you very much. Mr. Malash. Yep. Councilor Volks. Chris, to you, Chris. If, if I was to talk to Stantec tomorrow, are you telling me the date they if they'd be looking at is November sometime to get to the point where we could start building? Uh, through your, your worship, building. Pardon. I'm I'm not. Oh, my, my Council question, folks, my, building. My, my question is is that that if we were to talk to Stantec in terms of progression along with yourself, in terms of of in the interim control bylaw and building again for contractors to go in would they would they tell me at this place in time right now the system at a given date will assume six inches of rain and work uh through your worship they will tell you that yes they will tell you the system's improved um they will not tell you that it will not flood again they will not you know it, it all depends on weather and whatnot they will tell you what we've done. They can give you the, the improvements as far as uh, it'll handle X amount of rain or it should handle X amount of rain, yes. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, I've been to discussions with them as far as uh, construction of houses. I, you know, we've been through that a little bit tonight. The improvements are there to begin construction. Um, prior to you know half the capital works are done the other half is being done so uh, I think uh, 
Um, you know, you're at a point where you can be comfortable. You know, I, I don't see, uh, unfortunately, I, I wish it was, but I don't see 200 houses being built tomorrow. You know, uh, I, I think uh, this system, they'll never tell you what's going to be built is not going to impact the system. It will, but it will be negligible. And, and uh, you know, you should feel comfortable to move forward that way. Okay. So, so if we were if we were to put this in place tonight, if we were to move and 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 abolish the interim bylaw, which puts us back to natural business prior to the flooding dilemma, then would that that mean tomorrow the the gates would open to come up and come into the town of Essex and start building buying building permits? And I can tell you, there's a host right now of because I've been I've been meeting with them ongoing. There's a host of developers with everything in hand, just ready, waiting for yeah. that to be. Uh, three worship, that would mean yes. Uh, um, the bylaw has passed already, so you're already at that point. I think the meeting tonight was to clarify which direction council wanted to move forward. So yes, by all means, uh, they they uh, they can start. But as I noted, if it's a system where where they're going to need a review with respect to a subdivision development and a new stormwater connection or design, then there will be some improvements and enhancements made to that design system. And it'll be above and beyond what we have existing in our uh, development standards bylaw. Um, and we'll work with Stantec and ERCA to get there. But, but if someone is coming in to just build a infill a lot that already has an approved existing stormwater system, as noted before, then, then Yes, tomorrow that they, they would get their permit. But. So, so our only concern in terms of taxing the, the system as it sits today would be an independent who comes in and just building his own house for his own reason. Really, that would be more so expedited through as to a whole development, right? Yes. Thanks, Chris. Now, Dick Gunter. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Councillor Snyder. Uh, so the uh, the bylaw is passed anyways, mm -hmm. and and you're saying you know on a new home start anyways is three to four months down the road after completion. So um, I can't see why why we can't give the green light to go ahead now because the system probably be completed sometime in December at the latest. Let's say the end of December, even give them that far. So I think we'd be safe to. Uh, it's already lifted. The bylaw has already gone by. Correct. So I, I think we can give them a green light to, to start building here. I, I think, I, do you know how many new uh, home starts or how many apps we got for new, uh, new homes? Do you uh, know that off the top of your head? I don't know off the top of my head, but I, but I think you're in the, you know, 10, 10 20 ish yeah. area. And we, and we could use the growth. So, yep. So I, I don't know if you need a motion uh, no. to, to go ahead. If we need a motion to. Uh, Nothing. I don't think we need a motion if the bylaw is passed. Eh? No. Okay. You're thank right. you, Your Worship. Yep. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Chris. Anything further? Okay. For receipt. Okay. Motion to receive the report. Councilor Kaxer and Councilor Snively. Questions? On favor. Motion carries. Item nine on the agenda: Mayor McDermott, County Council update, re County of Essex correspondence to the Honorable Stephen Del Duca, re Highway Three. Okay, as everyone knows, the town sent a letter to uh, Minister Del Duca in the past and received a reply from him. Uh, also, after our tour of Highway 3 with the mayors and Minister Del Duca and Taras Natashak and a couple of the minister's aides, one being his engineer, uh, the county sent off through Mayor Tom Bain a letter to Minister Del Duca thanking him. And I'll just read, it won't be half of it, some of the statements that were made. Uh, he went on to say a few things, thanks and everything. And then the traffic volumes now approach, approach and exceed original projections and the proportion of commercial vehicles has escalated substantially, which we all know. Like even on a Sunday afternoon when we went there, arguably one of the least active traffic periods of the week you were able to witness firsthand the ch challenges confronting drivers. We had one guy pass us on a turn. We had another guy pass us when traffic is all but on top of us. 
and Tras Natashak wanted out because he was going to do something in his pants. It was so close, and you know, it was unbelievable. But we said that we are encouraged by your commitment because he did hear us and he had a lot of good things to say to us when we came back to the county building here. And uh, the final things we asked him was in an effort to enhance regional economic vitality and promote the safe and efficient movement of people, goods, and services into and out of our region, it is requested that the Ministry of Transportation and again, there's four points. I won't read them at all, but expedite the finalization of the EA addendum for the area. Immediately com com commence the detailed design for the sections of highway not impacted by the EA addendum. Provide funding through the Southern Highways Program to allow the construction to commence immediately upon com completion of the detailed designs and commence the environmental assessment and detailed design for the section of Highway 3 from here to the end of the road in Leamington. So, and I will say that that meeting with the minister for a couple hours, he appreciated what he saw, what he heard from us, and he's going to get on this, hopefully quicker than we expected, let's say. But that's just the update on what the county is doing with regards to Highway 3, sir. For receipt. Okay. Councilor Bondi, comment? Receipt and receipt. Okay. Motion to receive. Okay. Supported by Councilor Caccero. Any questions? Councilor Volks. Since you had the opportunity to be with Therese Nadeshak the other day, Therese was carrying the torch on taking it into the house in terms of, of questioning the house on number three. What did he share with you in terms of, of where his progression is to date? With the, with the cabinet minister on agreeing to do something to number three highway. Could you rephrase, rephrase the question? What did the chair? Pardon? What was your question again? My question was, was, was Trez Natishak has been very vocal yeah. and very media attentive to number three highway and trying to con convince the leaders in the house and the cabinet ministers of the need to enhance number three highway. My question to you is when you were with him the other day, did he talk to that particular issue? And if so, what did he say about his progression in the House on getting the Liberal government to move with the number three highway file? Well, he was going to take our concerns, you know, all the concerns that we as mayors and, you know, administration from the county had to say with regards to this, and he was going to move it forward in the House, along with Taras's support. You know, he was going to support Taras and vice versa. I, I, that's okay. I think you're missing my point, but thank you. All in favor of that motion? Okay. 10A on the agenda, item one. Correspondence from the Ministry of the Environment, re-update on the Marathon Oil Refinery Expansion for receipt. Support. Moved by Councillor Bondi, supported by Councillor Caxero. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 2 under 10A, correspondence from AMCTO, acknowledging Donna Hunter, Director of Corporate Services and Treasurer, and her 20 years of service as an AMCTO member, with presentation from His Worship. Moved by Deputy Mayor Malash, supported by Councillor Snively. And uh, before I ask for the question, I will read this little duty. And uh, by the way, it's Councillor, uh, Councillor, it is our Corporate Services Treasurer, Donna Hunter's birthday. Happy oh birthday, God. young lady. <laughs> Isn't it awful that everything should happen on the same good day? But anyways, this is uh, a great receipt that we got this last week with regards to membership services award in recognition of your 20 years of faithful service to AMCTO the Association of Municipal Managers clerks and treasurers treasurers of Ontario and personal contribution to the municipal profession a grateful association presents to Donna E Hunter AMCT 
this certificate as a testimonial to its goodwill, appreciation, and respect. 2016, Stephen Palmatier, AMCT President, on behalf of 2016-17 Board of Directors. Donna, congratulations, and thank you very much for all you've done. For Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and members of council, and it is a pleasure to work for the town of Essex, and it is a pleasure to receive this award, so thank you. Way to go on. <laughs> okay. You can look after it now. Good. Okay. Now, we need to, we have it moved and seconded. All in favor? Motion carries. If I could just say one thing, Your Worship. Yes, sir, Mr. Snively, Councillor Snively. Through your worship to Donna, I was there when we hired you way back, when it was 15, 16 years ago. And uh, I got to tell you, you put 150% in. Thank you. Still goes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, 10B on the agenda, item one. Correspondence from the Canadian Mental Health Association for receipt and that Essex Council proclaims September 10th to the 16th as Suicide Prevention Awareness Week in the town of Essex. Moved by Councillor Bundy. In support. Supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. Any questions? I, I have a Councillor Snively. Through your, through you, Your Worship, um, this is a real serious issue in today's society, and it really is. Um, I, I think the public, you know, instead of just receiving a report, I, I think the public should be aware of, if there is an issue, where can they go? Where can they turn? Where's the nearest, where's the nearest spot they can go for help? If, if we have that information, that would be great for the public. Because, I mean, we could sit here and re receive this report, but we're not telling the public if there is an issue out there and we know somebody needs help, and where can they go? Where can they go for this help? Where's the nearest, nearest spot from here, from Essex? Where can they go to get help? Thank you. If that can be answered, I don't know if it can tonight, but. Okay. Yep, Deputy Mayor Malash. Through your, your worship, I might even go one step further, knowing what uh, Councillor Snively has said that Perhaps we can get a hold of the Canadian Mental Health Association and ask them if they can do a presentation here to us. Thank you. Great idea. Make that motion. That being a recommendation, make Richard, right? I'll make that a motion then. Okay. I'll motion. second that motion. Supported by Councillor Snively. Questions to the motion? Councillor Votes? Not to the motion. I had my hand up before, so if you want to just support the motion, I'll, I'll, or I can just talk through the motion. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So it's a, I'll second it then for support. Oh, you got a second? Yep. Okay. Second it. Yep. So in terms of, of, of talking to it, Donna, a question you because the uh, Canadian Mental Health Association deals with so much more than just obviously suicide. They're, they're, an, they're an association that has done work for many, many, many people. And uh, um, being an association, I'm sure they're they're always in need of a financial contribution to support them and keep them financially sound. So um, I was just wondering, does our council uh, contingency fund, that's what I call the council contingency fund, would this support a contribution to them? This is Hunter. Through you, Your Worship, are you speaking to your discretionary fund, Councillor? Yes, yep. yes, that would be supported. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to send $500 to the, to the Canadian Mental Health Association, and I'm going to ask every councillor to, to match that. Country yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. Bondi. Thank you. I believe I have money left in my contingency fund, so I can also put $500 towards it. 
200 each. Thank you. Councilor Bondi, did I have you for a comment? No. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, that was a mover and seconder. Yeah. Sorry. To the motion. To the, if, if to I the could motion. Oh. So could that, that'll be obviously sent in mine and Cherry's name. Could we get a tax receipt for that? No, you can't. Why can't, can't I? You can't. Okay. <laughs> to the motion. All in favor? Opposed? Did I get a motion again? All in favor of the motion? Okay. Passed. Thank you very much. Okay. Item two under 10B, resolution from the town of LaSalle, carbon gas tax on the union gas bill for receipt or receiving support. Councilor Caxero and Deputy Mayor Malash, move supported. Support. Question, Councilor Caxero. I was just gonna make the motion to receive and support. Receive yep. support. Okay. okay. Supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. Questions? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Item three, Township of Carlo Mayo, we request to support Bill 171, Highway Traffic Amendment Act, with respect to waste collection vehicles and snow plows for receipt or receiving support. Move to receive and support. By Counter Bundy and Counter Bjergman. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item four. Correspondence from members of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamal Windsor inviting council to their 50 year celebration in Canada for receipt and that council proclaims the month of September as Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamal month in the town of Essex. Support. Moved by Councillor Snively, supported by Councillor Caxero. Any questions? I know in the invitation I'd just like to say that he would like a reply because they send out a lot of these and uh, rather than have, have to get a hold of Tahir, if you could just let me know if you were intending on going or not, I could pass that information on to him and save you a little time. Councillor Snively. Through your worship, uh, I, I went to this uh, last year and I tell you it was very touching to uh, to listen to the speeches and that it was very very well worth going to so I would recommend anybody that has a chance to go go to it it's it's well worth it you see you see a lot and there's a lot of eye-opening there believe me you got that right I've been to a number of these and I'm planning on again so all in favor of the motion motion carries Item five, correspondence from Donna Steinhoff, Steinhoff, sorry, re offered to sit as a member of the Essex BIA board for receipt and support and that Ms. Steinhoff be notified of her appointment with schedule A to bylaw 1376 to be amended accordingly. Receiving support. Moved by Councillor Bundy, supported by Councillor Caxero. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 11 on the agenda, committee meeting minutes, that the committee meeting minutes and items 11A and B be received and approved as presented. Moved by Councillor Cactero, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Any questions? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Item 12, 2016 capital report for the month ending August 31st, 2016 for receipt. Moved by Deputy Mayor Malash, supported by Councilor Bjorkman. Any questions? Just a statement. Wow, a lot going on in town, I'll tell you. Took forever to look at that thing. No wonder you're pulling your hair out of your head, Mr. Nancy. Lots going on. And the rest of you. All in favor of that motion. Motion carries. Item 13, new business on the agenda. 13A, Councillor Bondi speaking to, to two items, uh, the community emergency alert system and uh, providing an AMO conference report. Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. During this past weekend, uh, several of our council members got to talk with our MP at the Harrow Fair Parade, Tracy Ramsey, about our emergency response system, heaven forbid a tornado come through the town of Essex. 
So I thought it was something that we should just discuss and throw up on our radar and say, what can we do in terms of risk management and how can we support mm -hmm. Tracy's Sorry. request to the Ministry of the Environment saying that, you know, we need to do a better job down here of notifying people of uh, emergency weather. I don't know if there's something that our chief, our fire chief can add to this, but I think that maybe some members of council who were also privy to the conversation Saturday morning can, can talk about this as well. I just wanted to bring it up as a catalyst for conversation in, in Essex, really. Thank you. Anyone else? Our fire chief, Rick Arnell. Through you, your worship. Uh, yeah, it has been numerous years. Uh, the federal government used to uh, have a warning system that consisted of uh, sirens, if some of us people that have been around for a while remember. Uh, that's been removed 20 or 25 years ago. They took that out of the system. Uh, right now, the only thing we really have is uh, the province, uh, the Emergency Management Ontario has a website. You can go on that website and if you look on the website there's a, a ontario warnings you click on it you can go on then and subscribe to tornado warnings via email or text i, I printed some copies off and we can get it on the, our website and uh, tweet it out that's one way of doing it uh, alert systems we're we're looking at some different alert systems but again we're all can uh the whole thing hinges on the fact that the warning is going to come from uh, the weather office, which is uh, monitored by the government. So the, the, the quickest way for a resident to get it would be on their cell phone or email. Uh, as well, uh, Best Buy has a, a weather radio that you can buy. And I think they're $25 or $30, somewhere in there. And you can put in numerous weather stations in it when the alerts go off, it makes so much racket that it, it, it wake everybody up in the house. So uh, that is another way that we can do it. Right now, there is nothing provincially. Uh, we don't do things that the states, I know they have actual tornado uh, warning systems and set sirens off, uh, but uh, there isn't that anywhere in the province at the present time. Thank you, sir. Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you, through your worship. Uh, yes, I was part of that conversation along with Councillor Bondi on Saturday at the Harrow Fair Parade, pr prior to the Harrow Fair Parade with uh, Tracy and Taraz. And what we talked about too was the counties, uh, counties had a program for a while where we've tried to have a reverse 911. And it, it's with limited success because of the fact that uh, many individuals no longer have bell phones or home station phones. It's, it's a lot of it's uh, cell phone. So uh, although that they've tried and made the effort to do reverse 911, we know that's not, gonna, not really going to be effective. But um, further to what uh, uh, our chief, fire chief has, uh, uh, Arnell has said, uh, perhaps what we do is um, if it's weather-wise that we're concerned about, um, maybe we could have our IT department research some of the better apps that are that are out there for um, uh, predicting weather um, some that are free maybe some that uh, cost you money maybe different apps that you can pick up on your phone and I and I know a couple of them myself um, that you can actually download and uh, we could possibly put an ad in uh, the two local newspapers uh, also advertise it on our website um, perhaps put a notice, uh, like a, an announcement in our tax notices as well, um, and try and get the word out there. And if it comes as a kind of as a recommendation from the town of Essex that please use maybe one or more of these uh, particular uh, apps or, or particular weather stations. I know we've got a weather station at home that gives us uh, warnings as to when storms are approaching. Um, it's not necessarily Environment Canada that's giving the warning, but uh, American and Canadian. And uh, whatever we can do to help uh, predict weather, uh, not just tornadoes, but perhaps snowstorms as well and, and so on. But um, I'll make a motion that we perhaps have um, our IT department take a look at it and, and come back with a recommendation as to whether we 
move forward on something like that or or maybe we just um, maybe come back and let us know is it a good idea or is it not a good idea and what per perhaps we can do thank you mr. mayor okay we have a motion on the floor supported by counter votes no I don't no? okay that motion, we need a seconder for that motion Councillor Snyder to the motion Councillor votes yeah thank you worship I appreciate the efforts of, of what people are doing but obviously Tracy Ramsey's carrying the torch on that and and I think the proactive approach would be is to if Tracy could find it in her schedule to come to council do a presentation on terms of of the public demands for that and then build off of her presentation and support her presentation in order to muster momentum in the house to get something passed at a provincial level because if we have our IT people search into it it's redundant work because there's 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 no recovery of any funding and it's not going to happen until you have an opportunity to recover funding to do it at a provincial level we all know that sitting here it would have to be done in a grant and we can only do that with the with the assistance of Tracy at a federal level and Therese at a provincial level to take it in and start the discussions about that and if they and then through that we send a link to every municipality across Ontario asking them to support her presentation to Essex Council that's what I would be asking Council to do much more productive much more expeditious okay we have a motion on the floor by Deputy Mayor Malash and Councillor Bondi thank you I will be supporting the motion because I don't think there's any harm in what we're doing in the motion I did talk to Tracy yesterday at the Labor Day parade and she did her office did send myself a copy of, of the letter that she sent to the Minister of the Environment and I'll just give the Coles notes about it I'm writing you today to inquire about a situation that occurred in my riding as you may know the town of LaSalle experienced a tornado I understand the weather is extremely difficult to predict in that I know that officials at Environment Canada are working hard to deliver accurate information however I'm concerned about the lack of advanced warning that for the people in my region I request you look into this matter and provide me and my constituents with details regarding the process followed by the department officials including warning guidelines protocols established for severe weather systems and that's basically it that's what Tracy has sent on to the Ministry of the Environment maybe we can also send a letter to the Ministry of the Environment that we support uh, Tracy's ask and and kind of come at it at a couple different prongs I, I don't know what the solution is Tracy's definitely getting a lot of uh, comments about it and I've seen that if you're following her on social media after the tornado it was just lit up with requests and demands for help on how we can be better warned about tornadoes so I don't know if there's one solution here I think it's a multi multi level okay so unless you have something to the motion and then I'll come back to Councillor Vokes and Councillor Bondi for a further motion anything well anyone new to the motion just just you a comment a because yeah. I made the motion well, you have a chance last yeah. um, I know that uh, this is something other than what uh, um, our MP uh, Tracy Ramsey is doing and I, I give her a lot of credit for moving on this uh, and I'm, I hope she can get somewhere with it but um, it's just whether or not her voice is going to be recognized by the individuals that are in power uh, we are the tail end of the province and uh, of Canada and it's actually a federal issue to have the envir it's environment Canada that's going to be issuing the warnings I have concerns that they're going to probably move very slow not expeditiously and I think that this is something that we can do in the interim until there's a better solution uh, to try and give people uh, some indication as to what they can do because there's a lot of people out there who really don't have any idea what they can do at all so I think by us uh, maybe moving forward with a little project that uh, you know I, I don't think that this would cost us a lot of money to do this um, move forward and try and make it safer for our residents Thank okay you. with that now I'll ask the question all in favor of this motion motion carries now I go to Councillor Bonnie or Councillor vote for a further motion to deal with yeah I, if, if I could through sure. you Councillor actually Councillor Bondi um, 
is I want to reiterate what I just said. Is what I said is is that Tracy Ramsey at a federal level and and Therese Natashak at a provincial level is our voice in the house. So when we sit here and say that they're the only voice in the house, they're not the only voice in the house because the reality is is that they carry our message for us as taxpayers and as constituent representatives. And once again, I'm going to put a motion forward that Tracy Ramsey at her first office opportunity and schedule opportunity comes before council looking for endorsement for a emergency storm warning system implemented across Ontario and Canada. And that that message is sent to every municipality across Ontario to garner support. Seconded by Councillor Bonney. Questions to the motion? All in favor? Motion carries. Okay, just further to that before we get to the next point. Uh, when we were at AMO, I gotta get this thing out so I get it right. I was at one of the booths and it's from, I got an email a couple days ago from Chris Hakes. Uh, hi Ron, thank you for stopping at our booth at email conference and it has to deal with code reds, just what we're talking about. Now I've talked to the warden, uh, haven't been able to get a hold of Phil Berthium, he who is the emergency management guru for Essex County anyways, like we have a couple meetings a year where we get together each municipality with staff, you know, the mayors, and everybody's got a job to do in an emergency. And I was hoping maybe to get this person down. He says he'll come anytime we want him to. There could be a cost involved, so I was gonna present this to Phil and hopefully have it at the county building with the county, you know, all there, everybody, and anybody that wanted to hear about this thing could also attend. So. Anyways, when I get back from vacation a week from tomorrow, I'll follow up on this thing to see what this will help us do when it comes to emergencies. So thank you. Okay. Uh, still under new business, Councillor Bondi speaking to the AMO conference report. Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have uh, lots of chicken scratch notes today because my daughter didn't have a very long nap, so I didn't get a lot of working time. It was a great conference and it was just held uh, August 14th to 17th at the uh, casino. I have uh, some, some work items that I would like council to work on here because I think we need to take away things from AMO. Uh, a m couple of messages. Um, one, the Ministry of the Attorney General on joint uh, several liability. They, um, it was brought up that that is an issue for municipalities. The Attorney General said that it, um, under independent law, says that the joint several liability has to be contained. So the province is looking for, that's probably not gonna mean anything to anybody out there, but we've been following it for a long time. Joint several liability means somebody gets hurt in the town and if the town, the municipality is found at 1% fault, we get sued no matter what because we have deep pockets. So it's really bad for our taxes. It means we get sued for everything and our taxes have to go up. So anyways, the province pretty much said, we're not fixing it uh, because we can't and we're gonna look for other solutions. So I don't buy it. I think we need to work harder on that and push for them. I went to a workshop on health equity. This is something that I'd like council to really look at seriously in terms of strategic planning. Health equity means adopting a health in all policies approach. So in every policy we pass, right now we tie it back to our strategic plan. I think we need to include a health aspect in that. How is that policy related to the health of our municipality? Municipalities have a huge impact on the health of our residents. We're the front line of service, right? We look at, you know, when we tender jobs, we're looking at carbon footprints of those jobs. We're looking at making nice recreational facilities. We're looking at supporting libraries. We, um, you know, we're looking at idling bylaws, just a few examples. So it's a lot easier to, to make clean air and to promote, pre have a preventative approach with clean air than it is to come around in 10 years and look oh my gosh, we have dirty air, how do we clean the air, right? So it's taking a health approach, it's called a health lens. And every policy that we pass, we just have a, a, a bracket at the bottom that says, how does this affect the health of the municipality, right? We wanna make healthy choices. So that was one thing that really stood out, um, especially climate change and looking at procurement. 
maybe there's a way, and, and I, ha I have to dig deeper, I haven't yet, maybe there's a way in our procurement policies when we're tendering for cement, when we're tendering for gravel, that we can stick in carbon footprint as part of the tender package. So perhaps, because tenders that go out are weighted, you know, they're weighted for cost, they're weighted for references, whatever they're weighted for. If 20% if or 10% of the tender can mean carbon footprint, maybe that will mean more local <coughs> contractors can get local jobs. So that would be something that I would be interested in pursuing. There was a lot of talk around marijuana policy because that seems to be the hot topic too. So we talked about the Denver model. An administrator for Dem from Denver came to talk to us about the municipal implications of legalizing marijuana. And we all think, yeah, it's just, you know, let's just legalize it. It's going to be easy. But actually, when you break it down to municipal level, it's easy for the feds in the province to say, okay, it's legal. But then the job of enforcing it and regulating it and licensing it becomes a municipal responsibility. So if we can get some of the sales tax. In Denver, they had 21.5% sales tax. So we would try to get some of that sales tax back because we are the ones that have to have public education around it, enforcement, um, regulations, licensing. We need to license who cultivates it, who sells it, who manufactures it, how do you test it. Um, driving under the influence, there's a lot more. Uh, crime is not, crime doesn't go up as much with marijuana, but driving under the influence does with marijuana. And that's something that's, that's hard, to, hard to prove as well. So that was, really, that was a really interesting conversation because they're learning a whole bunch of unintended consequences. Things they didn't know that they didn't know. You know, they said um, edibles, um, like cookies and brownies, because there's different, um, different strands of weed or whatever. Some of the, they couldn't, they had a hard time regulating the edible marijuana. So that was, that was really interesting. I really liked that. Um, I met with my friends, the Canadian Labor Congress, and they made uh, a lot of interesting uh, comments. I had a good chat with them at the trade show. 60 years ago, municipalities only had 22% of the infrastructure, and now we have 60%. So municipalities are constantly running deficits just to repair ex existing infrastructure. Quality of life depends on well-funded public services. Public services play a key role in helping people reaching their full potential and participate fully in life. Public services reduce social and economic inequality. Shame on some of us who don't support our public services. So I think again we need to go to the letter to the Premier. Um, the leader of the opposition, Andrea Horvath, spoke about hydro rates. We cannot hear enough about hydro rates, right? One thing that we can do, ask the Premier again to take the HST off the hydro rates. That's one ask that I have of this council. We don't have to do it all tonight, but I'm going to ask you to do it all. Health and all policies, bring it into our strategic planning. This way we can streamline things like idling, because I don't want to reach dirty air before I can re breathe clean air again. Three, support public service jobs. These are not in order of any preference. If they were in order of a different preference, supporting public service jobs would have been first, obviously. Um, four, look for a way to opt for sustainable procurement. Maybe as a team, we get a team on this and see the, um, the cement organization that was there had some ideas on how we could do it. Uh, number five, this came up at, at the conference too, and investigate our responsibility on radon. I know our mayor and Councillor Caxero down at the end went to a workshop on that. They would have more insight in that. Another topic that did come up was um, service inline warranty for, for plumbing. I'd like to, I know this came up again before, and I did talk to Mr. Nepsey, our Director of Infrastructure, about it. But I think Tecumseh is, is experimenting with this. I think this is something we should also investigate in the town of Essex. It's, it's household insurance. It goes out municipal-wide. Uh, the homeowner would have to buy in. It's, it's insurance for your pipelines that go from your house out to the road. I think it's something that uh, Councillor Bjorkman and I kind of had that on our radar. It was going around on social media. I know I'm boring you, Councillor Vokes, but that's okay. I'm almost done. So another thing, uh, Doug, I did get you the little brochure on the self-cleaning toilet in case you want to look at that for the Colchester Harbor and around our splash pads. That's about it. Great information. I'm sure my, there was a whole bunch of us there, so I'm sure my council colleagues have other things to add, but that is my wish list. I have six things that I hope that uh, our council can take away and run with from the AMO conference. Thank you very much, Councillor. Okay. Okay. Yeah, maybe receive a Move receipt of the report. Question. Right. Okay, question Before first. Before you receive it. Yep, go ahead. Thank you. Um, from, from my last report that I received from the town of Essex, 
for administration and staff in that particular given year. There was over $100,000 of taxpayers' money being spent going to conferences, and you know how I feel about conferences. So my question is, Councillor Bondi, in all due respect to you, I got two questions. When they were at the Windsor Casino holding the conference, and they had all the discussions and everybody was there and all the proactive politicians were there who can make change and change the landscape and bring things into our community. Out of all the people that were collectively there, can you tell me what's tangible today as a result of that conference? Councillor Bonney? Councillor Vokes, I had uh, six things and I think there's six very important things. Another thing No, 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 want, no, I mean no. tangible. Tangible. I mean something that is going to be put in place this week, tomorrow. Something tangible. Well, it depends on if you're willing to work together and get some right. of those items done. Okay. I think there was lots of things. Okay. And my second question is, is that I'm under the understanding that the, the conference was somewhat in the direction of jobs and the importance of jobs, local jobs, community jobs. Where were the shirts made? that people wore to the conference? I can answer this. Councillor Rodney. I, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I can answer this because I looked, because I didn't have a woman's cut shirt. So, uh, Thailand. Made in Thailand. Interesting. Canadian jobs going down the, 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 the drain. Conference leaders talking about jobs, and the shirts are made in Thailand. Now you know where I stand on conferences. Thank you. Boy, let's not get into that. Wow. Anyways, uh, do we, runs do we, from oh, it. we need a motion. I won't support it. Well, wait till I make it, and then you can disagree with it. We need a motion. Deputy Mayor Malash, Councillor Caxero. Any questions to that motion? Mr. Mayor. Councillor Bondi. Thank you couple things. One thing I forgot to add, we met with the Ministry of Tourism and talked about Canadian Transportation Museum in Colchester Harbour. We met with the Ministry of Corrections and talked about animal welfare, which was a really good, which was my favourite ministry meeting because we got to talk about the tethering lengths and the ministry was like, well, how did you come up with this research? And I was like, well, we just did it. And so they're looking to us about tethering and chaining lengths in the province. So I thought that was really fun. Also, I talked to them about traveling circuses too. So hopefully we'll see some tangible things there. We also met with the Ministry of Education and talked about the community hub. And we also met with the Ministry of um, Natural Resources and talked about minnow har harvesting in the harbor. So there's four other things, tangible things. And I will add, the Premier was there mentioning community hubs and when we did meet with the Minister of Education, we reminded her that the Premier is 100% behind community hubs, so give us some support in getting that former Harrow High School, you know, in our hands so we can make good use of it. Councillor Volks. Thank you. Can you expand a little bit, uh, Councillor Bonnie, on what they said about the transportation, the Canadian uh, Transportation Museum in Heritage Village? We could save a lot of this as counselor. I can, oh, but maybe yeah. one of my colleagues wants to uh, have, have a chance as well. We All right. We went there as a, as a council and we talked to them about the importance of the Canadian Transportation Museum to the town of Essex. And they said that as long as the Canadian Transportation Museum fills out their grants going forward, and there's no infractions in their grant work that the grant is, is guaranteed. Yeah. Well, that's a fallacy. I won't get into it right now, but if I had a half an hour, I can tell you that's a fallacy. And the truth is, isn't, isn't it, a, isn't it I, not fallacy in what you're saying, a fallacy in what they're saying, and I could profoundly prove that. So they're just blowing a little sm cosmetic smoke. And, and secondly to that, isn't it ironic that as you see in the email I sent out today, the Transportation Museum was voted by TripAdvisor the number one tourist attraction in this region. All at the same time, they come to us as council for a small financial contribution. We turn them down and say no, but then we got the nerve to go ask the government. Okay, at, Councillor uh, Vokes, it's, uh, it's a not point a point of order. order. It is a point you're, of order. You're, you're covering getting, I want to be transparent. Excuse me. Okay, There's a point ahead. of order, so you cannot speak. Only the person that has the point of order. No one else has, no so one I will. The point of Excuse order. me, sir. Point of order. Okay. 
and I rule on all points of order. Okay. You are out of order because you're talking about something different than what we're talking about here now. You're talking about something in the past and we're talking, dealing with the present, which has to deal with the motion. And I'll have Mr. Auger read the motion just so we know what we can and can't speak about. I believe the motion was just for receipt of the AMO conference report. Which is Councillor Bondi's presentation. So with that, I'll ask for the question. Move receipt and support. Opposed? It passed. Passed. Thank you very much. 13B under new business is Councillor Vokes speaking to the memorial stones at the Spitfire Memorial. Councillor Vokes. Yeah, I'm talking about the memorial stones at the Priscilla Memorial Spitfire Plain. And uh, uh, as you know, as Susan, Suzanne Allison and the committee at the, their last presentation at council, prior to them walking out at the end, had asked the town of Essex to endorse and support placements of memorial stones that independent people can buy because out of the over 1,800 names that the Essex Memorial Spitfire Committee collected and responded to all those people, and their names were ultimately placed on the wall. Unfortunately, as, as it's being discovered, there's a few people being left out. Not being left out, weren't, weren't weren't acknowledged or known that opportunity was there. So there's been a program set up with Hallmark Memorial that anybody who has a, a relative that served in the RCAF for $275, they can go to Hallmark Memorial, buy a stone with their family member's name on it, and we will place it somewhere at the base of the memorial wall in the ground, but we need the assistance of the town to help with that as those stones are bought and purchased. So I'm looking for support from council to, to direct administration through Doug's office that as those names come in and those stones arrive, the town workers place them into the ground on behalf of the RCAF veterans. Okay, we have a motion on the floor and we have a seconder to discuss. Councilor Bjorkman. First of all, I'll go to Mr. Sweet, Director of Community Services. Through your worship, at that meeting that Councilor Vokes is speaking of, Council did give us direction. So where we have a location, there's a mulch area just to the left of the, uh, the wall. Um, so it's right by where the memorial is. It's a matter of the process of the bricks coming in. Um, I think to date, just after that meeting, we received maybe one inquiry, but I don't believe we received anything since that. So I think it's a matter of promotions. We did receive the direction from council. We do have a location. It's just a process of those people bringing the bricks that they purchased. And we want to ensure they meet the same spec so it's not all different colors. Good, in continuance. Okay, Thank council you. folks, hang on now. You spoke once with the motion. You get the wrap up, okay? You'll have the last chance. You're only sure. gonna get one more, okay? Thanks. We need a second. No, we did get a second here. Council Bjorkman. Second, uh, right, Councillor? Yep. Okay. okay. Councillor Cacero. To your worship to Doug, uh, I believe at that meeting, um, the comment that I made was uh, if we could have some sort of maybe a design in taking into consideration, uh, and I don't know how many stones to, to potentially consider coming forward. Obviously, there hasn't been uh, an influx of, of a lot of them at this point, but there could be at some point. And I had asked maybe to go back to the committee and, and uh, maybe come up with a design so that we know where, if we need 200 stones placed, where they're gonna go so that we're not just placing stones here and there and everywhere. So I just wanna make sure that we have a good plan in place to, to accommodate that. Yes. Your Worship, we do have a plan. That's how we base the location where, um, because we do not know the number, it could be one, five, could be 100. Yes. So we have the location where we can accommodate all those, where we'd fit and it would meet with the, the wall. In terms of the specs at that meeting, they didn't mention Hallmark, yes. which also did the Harrell Senate's half. So if we kind of keep that consistent look, I think it'd be good match the current memorial wall. Good. So Thank just, you. Just follow up. Yes, contract so, take care. So how many stones then have we looked at potentially accommodating we at this know. point? 
We don't know that. Yeah, through your worship, we don't know at this moment, but uh, that location on either side, you could get at least a, a hundred, and then you have the other side of the sidewalk, so we could accommodate quite a few uh, stones. That, that was the question that I wanted to answer. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else to the motion? Council votes. Thank you, Your Worship. The committee's already worked out a memorial stone design along with a path of placement. So there's no, no worry about somebody coming and just stick, because we just don't want to stick it anywhere. It's not very respectful just to stick it anywhere. We already have a plan in place. So, so before the motion, which I hope will be supported, I certainly want to take opportunity of, of administration to make sure we get something put on the website, acknowledging that the town of Essex is still seeking veterans who haven't been recognized. And if we could do that through Lori, please. And I certainly want to call on the media tonight to let it be known to all the RCAF and RAF veterans, if somebody in your family was overlooked, that, that the Essex Memorial Spitfire Committee, working with the town of Essex, still has a strong willingness to make sure everybody's recognized through this process. Thank you. Ready for the question? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 13C under new business as added this evening. Councillor Bondi speaking to a streetlight at King Street in Erie and Harrell Centre. Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm not sure through you to uh, Director Nepsey, I'm not sure if this has come up before, but this is rearing its ugly head again about traffic volumes on the corner of Erie and King by the Smith's funeral home. And just people are having a hard time going north and south because east and west is so busy. And I guess there was an accident there about two weeks ago again, and I just got a request from a resident just to look at it as a possible street light. So I don't know if I could have your insight on that, please. Uh, through your worship, yep. uh, I haven't heard anything. I haven't had anything come through my office, but that is a county intersection. Um, as far as, uh, although it's in the connecting link. So I'll. I'll touch base with uh, Tom Bateman, the county engineer, and, and uh, I'll respond to you accordingly. Thank you. Counter Yeah, thank you, Worship. I think Chris has already probably alluded to it. We, you know, it, with all accents, there's a case history. So we should look at the case history file of how many accents are there, and if it's if it's support work with the county and, and, and get one put in. We just we just did it right here at, at Fairview and and. Uh, Main Street because it's really the same for the pains they're having out there right now. So if the history is, is significant enough, we should lobby as we did here to get a stop light put in. Thank you. So my question, when you talk a street light, it's uh, one of those lights at the corner of my house and the next street down. Are we talking about a street light or are we talking about a red light? That's what I need to know. Sounds like we're talking about a red light now, but a street light isn't a red light. Stop light. It's a red light? Th through your worship, I think a signalized light is, is what yeah, Councillor Bonnie's alluding to. Oh, okay. The big one. No. Oh. Because we had an accident or two there? <laughs> is that it? Yes, because traffic volumes are so dense that you can't get through there. I don't know, maybe we can monitor it. Okay, Just thanks. Item 15, any announcements from council this evening? Hi. Oh, Councilor Bjorkman. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I just wanted to uh, make mention that uh, Libro Credit Union Awards uh, came out this uh, fall, and we had two of our local organizations were actually beneficiaries, uh, the Essex and Community Historical Research Society um, for their digitizing, uh, received $5,000 through Libro and then Community Living Essex County uh, received $21,000 for the Youth in Action Summer Work Experience. So it was just great to see Libro supporting our town and supporting uh, uh, different ventures here. So I just want to make sure we we're all aware of that and uh, thank them for it. Thank you, sir. Anything else? I just have one announcement. Like tomorrow morning, I go on my yearly fishing trip and I won't be back till next Thursday. So if you need to get a hold of the mayor, you will be contacting Deputy Mayor Malash. You will be filling in my spot, okay? Thank you. Okay. Item 16 on the agenda, bylaws. 
Bylaw for third and final reading this evening is number 1549, be in the confirming bylaw from the proceedings of the August 22nd regular council meeting. Moved by Councillor Caccero, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Bylaw for first and second reading this evening is number 1551, be in the confirming bylaw for the proceedings of this September 6 regular council meeting. Moved by Councillor Bonney, supported by Deputy Mayor Melage. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Agenda item 16C being bylaws for first, second, and third readings. Bylaw 1550 being a bylaw to amend bylaw number 224, the town's parking bylaw, uh, with respect to the removal of the no parking signs on Queensway Street. Moved by Councillor Snively, supported by Councillor Vokes. Questions? Councillor Vokes? Uh, Chris, do you have any timeline when we could get those removed? Uh, through our ship, I'd have to go and uh, discuss with the manager of operations as far as their, uh, their schedule, but I can't uh, see it not happening within the week. Okay, thank okay. you. And, and I, ju I just, yep. I, I just want to make a comment on that. Is, is when that dilemma hit from the constituents in terms of, of the community, I, I want to give a, a accolade where an accolade is due. And, and Chris Napsey, in terms of the infrastructure director, was protective of the town and its interests, but every, every bit minded of the community and myself as a counselor and what, what, what the challenges were. So the decision that Chris made that day was, was wholeheartedly with the town of Essex, but at the same time, uh, keeping his door open of his office to understand the concerns it was raising. So Chris, publicly to that, I wanna say thank you very much for your work on that and your help and it's it's also on record and known that if if occurrences come on file as a result of the removal of those signs that we will go back to the table and we will open this discussions again about the, the need for those signs to be put back in and that's known with the community so Chris I, I want to say to you thank you for having your office open for those discussions All in favor? Motion carries. Second item under 16C, as added to the agenda this evening, is bylaw 1548, being a bylaw authorizing a lease between Stuart Gilbert and the Corporation of the Town of Essex uh, with respect to the lands located at 49 Talbot Road North in Essex, Ontario, for first, second, and third reading. Moved by Councillor Gartman, supported by Councillor Cactero. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Third item under 16C, as added to the agenda this evening as well, is bylaw 1552, being a bylaw authorizing a lease between Suncor Energy Products Partnership and the Corporation of the Town of Essex for first, second, and third reading. Support. Moved by Councillor Volk, supported by Councillor Bondi. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. And I believe we're looking for an adjournment, Your Worship. Yes, sir. Councilor Caxero and Deputy Mayor Malage, always in order. Thank you very much. Have a great evening, everyone. Yes, we'll get that.